Hello and welcome to Defense Line, our weekly show on defense, security and more. The border standoff with China over their soldiers crossing the line of actual control in the Dalat Beg oldie sector of Ladakh shows no signs of abating. The tents, which the PLA soldiers had pitched nearly 15 kilometers inside the Indian territory, continue to be replenished. Why have the Chinese done this at this point of time and what is the way out? This is what we discuss today with Major General C.S. Panag, who as Brigadier General Staff of a Corps has intimate knowledge of the ground situation. Professor Rakesh Datta, Head of the Department of Defense and Security Studies at Punjab University, Chandigarh. And Lieutenant General A.S. Sekho, former Director General of Military Operations. Gentlemen, welcome to the discussion. But before that, let us look at this report. The military standoff between India and China along the line of actual control refuses to die down. Nearly 40 PLA personnel are stationed 19 kilometers inside the Indian Territory and set up tents in Dalat Begoldi sector in Depsong Valley in Ladakh. A move which, if extended, threatens to cut off India's access to some 750 square kilometer in northern Ladakh. The area is 70 kilometers south of Butse of Dalat Begoldi sector and a banner reads, you are in Chinese territory. The PLA personnel are continuing to get regular supplies through a convoy of trucks. Meanwhile, India has stepped up vigil in the area through unmanned aerial vehicles. It has been reported that the Chinese side has adopted an aggressive posture during patrolling in the DBO sector and have set up five tents there. Surveillance imagery captured by spy drones shows that PLA troops had made three simultaneous incursions in adjoining areas in the DBO sector in mid-April. There have been three flag meetings between both the sides, but to no avail. China is adamant that India dismantled infrastructure it has built in eastern Ladakh, including bunkers and roads close to LAC. This includes an observation post at Chumar in eastern Ladakh, since India can overlook Chinese positions and keep tabs on troop movements there. Rejecting this, India has asked the Chinese troops to withdraw to their pre-April 15 positions. Meanwhile, in Delhi, Army Chief General Bikram Singh has briefed the Cabinet Committee on Security chaired by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, during which he listed various options before the government, including aggressive views of the military. We are in discussion with three eminent panelists. General Pranag, to start with you, what do you think has led to the present standoff with uh, China? See, the LAC has never been demarcated, never been mutually agreed. The Chinese have always had their perception and we've had our perception. Way back in 91, when I was the, in Srinagar Corps, right. which was controlling this area, the Chinese would come to patrolling to this area and they would come in vehicles. They have very easy access. We were entirely dependent on air supply. I believe the access from their side is even more easy now because I think they have built roads up to that area. Yes, even those days, the Chinese patrols used to come in a vehicle and they would come short of the trig point, I forget which trig point it is, and they would leave telltale signs. Our patrols would be patrolling that area and we would remove those telltale signs and leave our telltale signs. So this cat and mouse game has been going on for years, but there was no standoff. So you uh, primarily attribute this to a difference of perception? Perception of LAC from both sides. But then the question that arises is why now? I mean, it could have been done, let's say, 10 years ago, it could have been done 20 years ago. China is beginning to assert itself. Chinese have kept quiet for 25, 30 years. I mean, all their border disputes, either they settled them in the 50s or they just let them lie. Okay. They have been building up their armed forces, modernizing their armed forces. They are talking today from a point of strength. We, I'm sorry to say, our government has neglected the armed forces. So you mean the Chinese were waiting for the opportune time? Not opportune time. They are now ready to assert themselves. <clears throat> and we, in my opinion, are in no position to give them a punch on the nose. Very unless sad. unless we want a sledgehammer on us. Okay, very sad to hear that. Uh, Professor Datta, what do you think led to the present intrusion? Is it a difference of perception, as uh, General Panag says, 
or are they trying to <coughs> indulge in psychological coercion of sorts? See, let us see. Uh, it's always been said that uh, there's, a, there's a difference of perception. But the difference of perception had been right from 48 onwards, 49 okay. onwards. We still been carrying that, you know, burden of 62. And afterwards, this uh, Mao smile. Then we had 67 Nathala Pass incident. Then 86, we have Sam Drumcho Valley area. Then we had all those, uh, you know, Rajiv Gandhi going there. And every time our leaders had been going to China, he had to face some embarrassment. Either Chinese would go in for some kind of blast or they would like Vajpayee, Mr. Vajpayee had gone there, they had gone in from Vietnam. Then there had been, you know, consistently build up our, the kind of strategic encirclement uh, as far as hinterland is concerned, as far as the ocean part is concerned having refurbishing those uh, places uh, again on the par Indian periphery. So, you so think there, it's a very clear strategy. There continuously this kind of, uh, you know, uh, tactics, nibbling tactics by China, not very active, the way that they have now started showing this is a kind of standoff as far as India and uh, LAC is but, but concerned. But what do you think of the timing? A lot of people feel that since, uh, you know, elections are on in Pakistan and a lot of attention is diverted there, maybe this kind of intrusion would go unnoticed. No, but then, you know, it is always the uh, Chinese had failed, you know, how to influence the adversary's mind. And they knew it that this is a kind, if, I mean, they, I mean, see, Pakistani and Chinese always been testing us. Okay. Pakistan also been testing us. Before we had gone in for the nuclear weapons in 1999, so Kargil was concerned. And they also is testing us because we also now started, you know, thinking of AGL. We also starting of uh, increasing our logistics both on the eastern and the western front. So Chinese thought let's test. I mean, what exactly is going to be our reaction to their kind of incursion on our side? And if all that we've been also admitting it that there's a change of perception of the LAC, including our army chiefs also before this and before that also. Obviously, we are give, going to give them loud thinking to see if so, there is so, a change so of perception. So, you say that primarily they are testing us and this is another uh, test of sorts. Why not then? You know, if there is a change of perception, LAC is disputed, then obviously they also have a right to come to our side. And if we also feel privileged in that way to c control their part of it as our part of it, we should also be doing it. Yes, I believe in the last uh, two years, there have been at least four to five hundred intrusions of some kind. And the worst is we all been underplaying <coughs> these intrusions. The we government of India had not been admitting this. We've been underplaying these intrusions. Yes. Uh, General Seko, let me get into the discussion. You've been the Director General of Military Operations. Yes. Did you see this coming? No, you know, the, we have not been having too many intrusions, as uh, General Pan is saying, but we have been having transgressions. Okay. As uh, General Panag has just said. Isn't laid that out. a softer word for intrusions? No, no. Intrusion is where you get inside and stay. Okay. That becomes intrusion. But if you come inside, transgress your you know, so-called line of actual control, and then get, got back, that is transgression. Okay. We have been having transgressions. And there is total uh, confusion in terms of the layout of the line of actual control, because we have not shared our maps with them. They have not shared their maps with us in this particular sector. The only sector where the maps have been shared is the central sector, okay. where again there is a, incidentally, during these uh, ongoing talks between us and Chinese, there are six points which have been uh, which have been, uh, you know, identified as the uh, disputed points. Okay. And this particular uh, area is one of those points. Okay. Demchok is another one. In this uh, Ladakh only, a tumor is another one. This is where there is a huge difference in the perception of line of actual control. Okay. And these are the places where so-called transgressions take place. The overall pattern of these so, uh, transgressions have been quite uniform each year, year by year. But now what has happened is over the years when the talks have gone on endlessly without really achieving much, the Chinese have used up this time to build up their infrastructure. Okay. Their class, you know, 18 class, 40 class, 70 roads are coming very near to the, you know, uh, the border. And they have laterals connecting all the way. While we have been dragging our feet for various uh, reasons, if you uh, all know that there is something known as China Study Group, which is headed by the, the National Security Advisor. Army is represented by the Vice Chief in that. Right. That study group has identified 73 strategic roads for us to build on a fast track basis. 
we have dragged our feet. I have retired now for three years now. During my tenure, we could push through about 10, 12 crores, those roads. Those roads are still lagging. And so the when were these 70 identified? What year was that? I, I won't be able to tell you exactly, but quite some years. Okay. I'll tell you. At in 19, when the roads were initially identified, in 1995, yeah. I was MGGS Eastern Command. Okay. And that is the time when we said that we must build up our infrastructure, we must build these roads because Chinese are building their roads and there is no natural resources to be extracted from them. There is no civil population to be served. Those roads are being built for operations against India. And I'm sorry to say very little was done about it. But then, uh, but, but how is there a feeling? No, I'll just let me okay. complete. R right. And one of those roads is going towards the DBO. Okay. Uh, that's why I'm bringing up these roads. Right. And if you recollect, I think a year or year, uh, two years back, we had activated the airstrip near the DPO. So one of us moving towards that, uh, this may be one of the, the reactions to that. This may have uh, triggered uh, the may, uh, may have. Uh, I'm transgression. May, because uh, transgression have been taking place earlier on. The, the present intrusion. Second point I would like to make is that in the so-called intrusions, wherever we have gone simultaneously in the area and stood our ground, right. Chinese have backed off. Okay. If you recollect about uh, three years or four years back, there was a face-off in the area of Sikkim. We called it the finger area, right. which appeared in the papers also. There we stood our ground and the Chinese uh, backed off. So the point I'm making is that first and foremost, our infrastructure is weak, which needs to be speeded up. And as General Panag is saying, he is acting from a position of strength because it will take, you know, months and months for you to react. So, uh, second thing is that uh, the force ratio is very heavily weighed against us vis-a-vis -vis the Chinese. The force ratio is heavily weighed against us. Against I'll, ju I'll just come back to yeah. uh, come back to you on that. Uh, General Pranag, uh, uh, do you think China has picked on the subsector north and not the Arunachal sector? Primarily because uh, it is here that they feel uh, the most vulnerable. Yes. They feel vulnerable and also we are at the end of our logistic rope and their logistic rope comes right up to the edge. We have to go right from uh, by air and air, the airstrip can be put out of action in no time. Okay. And the rest is helicopter supply and which is not suitable for large scale operations. So they have chosen the sector very after deep thought. So, is it true that the 62 operations had also started from here? 62 operations, uh, there were some operations here. Dalat Bay Goldie, contrary to what people think, is it's not a town or a village. It is just it's just the grave of Dalat Beg. Right. He was buried there. He died on the Silk Route. The Chinese were not interested in this area. We have gone to the wrong area, the Chip Chap Valley and things like that. Whereas Chinese main this this thing was in Chishul. And even now, this may be just putting us off their proper... Right. This is an interesting uh, point that this area, there's no town there. It is just that uh, Dolph Beg, uh, there's a grave, grave. of Dolph Beg. Yes. I think he must be turning in his grave now. <laughs> General Pranag, uh, we have a couple of agreements in place with uh, China. There's one agreement of 93, the Border Peace and Tranquility Agreement. There's another one of uh, 96. Uh, do you think those agreements with what is happening now uh, could be falling apart? No, they'll continue. And the Chinese always thumb their nose at us and then they say they think it con the agreements continue. Like, I don't think there was a bigger affront than refusing a visa to the Northern Army commander to visit yeah, that's about the military delegation. Right. And we took it lying down. So we should take we should take up these issues yes, very strongly. It's, it's, but we have to come to a position of strength, That's which right. sadly we are not. Uh, Professor Datta, there is a feeling that China was quiet uh, for all these years because you know it was kind of building up militarily and also infrastructure wise. Do you also agree? Yes, certainly we've been eulogizing China. You know, saying is the kind of military modernization has gone in for, for all these periods, the four time increase in the military budget as far as you are concerned. Obviously, if it was targeting America, certainly they would not look, you know, so easily on the periphery. And we are the only country which is there who could uh, confront them or contest them. As far as uh, regional, uh, uh, regional politics is concerned, 
or we also trying to have it a kind of a global power image on that front so obviously china we, will we, not we look at these easily we just talk about it you know we just talk <laughs> about it we don't do anything about it you know that is a there's okay, a jal sekho uh, militarily uh, how we place you touched upon it i know a little while ago but how well placed are we no i Chinese? touched upon it uh, a little while ago right. on an overall perspective right but uh, when you see it uh, tactically at the uh, point of uh, say intrusion or point of contact we have adequate force in the ladakh region okay. to fight a tactical battle i am talking about that overall force level when china builds up the forces moving forces from the other military regions to bring it to the extent of 32 or divisions which he can right. spare for our our border in that context we are perhaps adversely uh, you know placed so in a in a localized tactical battle we have adequate force to fight a successful defensive battle so so when we come to the immediate issue of uh, the, this particular intrusion in rakhi nala yes uh, do you think we are in a position to throw them out militarily uh, i wouldn't know whether the government would like to take on uh, that kind of an action but but you can always uh, carry out action of the similar kind in say adjoining area where again there is a difference of perception of uh, line of actual control okay if they have come 15 kilometers here well you go 10 kilometers somewhere else so you have that's, got that's an interesting suggestion yes so uh, you throw the ball in his court okay you go back from here and i'll come back from there but are such suggestions often made to the government since you served at a very high level no i'm sure they are made and i'm sure uh, the present chief would have made this suggestion why not This is a very obvious suggestion to a military mind. Right, Professor Datta, how do you deal with a situation like this now? But, how do you the make change. them vacate Rakhi Nala? See, the thing is, we could always take on these kind of situation as the situation comes. But what uh, Jan Sekho is saying is easily doable. I mean, they done it here. You do it in another place. You do it here, but then, but then, when you are giving these kind of thought process also in the media, because this kind of a thought process also come. in right. one of the channels you know okay. and there was also news from the chinese side that they are they are conscious of these kind of you know those uh, reversal uh, kind okay. of okay jal jal nag what do you think i might take it just make yeah, one point please you know in a peace time scenario which is the scene today right china continuously holds about six or divisions in the tibet autonomous region which are not big enough to carry out a major incursion major operation okay. against you considering the overall sino indian border he can only do things of this nature which is done to react to these and to defend ourselves against the against, against these we have got adequate force that's the point i'm making in case it escalates further right. then of course the diplomacy will come in you will not let it escalate beyond that then the game changes but i am saying from a local localized intrusion point of view you have got adequate force tactically available to you to react right uh, jal panag if we were to forcibly evict them from this place or we move into another place how do you think the chinese will react could the whole thing escalate go back to 1962 when the prime minister of india said i have given the order to the armed forces to throw the chinese out of the out of our territory see what happened here you have a defense minister ex defense minister making a statement that army should be left free to do what they want to do the government has to keep control either this defense minister is unaware of what the capabilities of the defense forces that means he was not doing his job when he was defense minister or he is just playing to the gallery so Such so, so you won't be you won't opt for a military uh, you know action at this point no right? so we should talk to them and try yes. and uh, talk to yeah. them in no unambiguous terms raise it to the highest level ki please let us since you are interested in economic growth we are interested in economic growth why make a laughing stock of ourselves in the world both of us will go economically back let us sit down and draw redraw our borders and so so, so talks is the way out yes. uh, jal sekho how do you react to a tweet by a former northern army commander lieutenant general h s panag he has suggested that we should if the, the chinese don't vacate the the rakhi nala we should move a brigade and a combat group of the mechanized forces uh, to the ssn se sector uh, the sub sector north and an additional division and armored brigade to the other part of ladakh no oh, th that's a part of escalation okay that's a that will be part of escalation because he's got a mechanized divisions well, available to him in the tar so if you move a combat group he will also move a combat group 
So it could uh, lead to a it could a, lead to escalation. It could lead to escalation. One should keep it to um, if you are not interested in escalation, which I'm sure we are not. We should keep it to the, I think, infantry-based uh, actions. Local levels. It's a, it's a platoon action. You carry out a platoon action. He has also suggested that we uh, do demonstration flights by the uh, Air Force. Is that, uh, is that a viable option? Uh, should that be done? Is that a prudent option, I would say? No, I, won't, I don't think uh, Air Force would like to cross the line of actual control. I don't think the Air Force, you would like to, you know, upgrade the whole thing to a uh, Another dimension. And then they are always hesitant in, <laughs> you know, getting onto the one kind point. Of it. Uh, cover. Uh, yes, General. Air Force is our strong point in the entire Chi against the Chinese, because we take off our planes take off from lower altitude. They can carry more weaponry, more bomb load. Right. Chinese planes take off much higher, but if weapon air for air has to be used, it has to be used for effect. A demonstration is not going to frighten any the Chinese. Okay, since we have very little time now, Jal Sekho, what is the long term, uh, you know, the solution to the whole long problem? Term, long term solution is build our infrastructure. Okay. Take our roads right up to the area where you, where you intend to deploy and, uh, you know, hold your ground against the Chinese. Uh, modernize your forces. Uh, if you recollect about two years back, the government had sanctioned raising of two divisions to to, to address that so-called force ratio, you know, um, syndrome. I think uh, they were to raise another two and a strike corps headquarters. Because the, the thing is that in a, in a conflict with, the, uh, with any country, you cannot only be reacting and defending. You have to have capability to, to hit back, to hit back in some manner, whether it is big or small. At the moment, we have got very marginal capability to hit back the Chinese. Right. We can defend. Yes. So, so we have to build up our capability to hit to back if up, required. We have to build up wherever the areas are remote. We have to build our you know heli bond capability so that those areas can be accessed through the third uh, dimension. Professor, Professor Datta, uh, should we take the initiative and suggest to them that let's sit down and demarcate the the LAC? See, they will not do it because there's only tool in their hands to see that the, at an when they could exploit at the time of the choosing. But the only thing that we need to do is we have to be, be decisive. We don't allow the things to just keep on and sitting over it. You know, when they did it, we could have also tactically done it. Okay. And then, then see the situation as it emerges. But since we have given all this time for them also to look at it and we also know a little bit indecisive what to do, what not to do. Obviously, that is giving a wrong signals to world over and to the other peripheral countries also that they can do anything and come with us. Cover, and then, you cover, know, right, right, Panag, cover, uh, since you're running out of cover, time, yes. there is a resolution of the unanimous resolution of the parliament that every inch of Indian territory occupied by Chinese will be recovered. And it is almost 50 years old. What have we done? What has our government done to follow this parliamentary resolution? It was a unanimous resolution. Either we scrap that resolution or we work towards fulfilling it. Okay, but General Panag, if now we were to uh, suggest to the Chinese that let's sit down and demarcate the LSE, do you think they would agree? Yes. Is it in our interest? They, we can make them agree. There is a very nice weapon in your hand. Hurt them economically. Stop their imports. No, but the economics is already on their side. I mean, 70 billion that we talk about. I mean, they are at advantage position and we are not. Professor, but then we only want what, to circumvent our saying. military operations just but, by... But what, what about other we options want. that you are talking about? Let's say the other option is of build up our navy and uh, try and uh, strengthen Co the, the forts around I, our uh, I, I disagree with the professor. Okay. What I am saying is, China is very dependent on our exports. We are not dependent on their imports. We can, we quite okay. In fact, our own companies are being hurt due to Chinese imports. So if we tell the Chinese ki we will counter you on, on, on the economic ground on okay. in, in national interest, either you, if you want to be friends with us and we have a trade ties, we reaching 100 billion this thing, let us, re, let us demarcate this LAC. If you don't want to demarcate it, sorry, we, we, we will, we start, uh, uh, putting the screws down on the economic front. Oh, okay, okay. Since no, Professor Datta, since you run out of time, that I think we'll, we'll, we'll organize another discussion to take this uh, forward. Thank you very much for joining us in, uh, on this discussion. While every effort should be made 
to have the Chinese vacate the intrusion, it is critical to demarcate the LSE, both on ground and map. And for this, perhaps India should take the initiative. That is all in Defence Line. Do write your feedback. Good luck and goodbye. खबरों की दुनिया में आइए हमारे साथ कहीं भी और कभी भी जुड़िए हम मिलेंगे फेसबुक पर हम दिखेंगे यूट्यूब पर हमें फॉलो कीजिए ट्विटर पर खबरों के साथ बने रहिए रात दिन